This is episode 330 of the Beyond the Food Show, and today I'm taking you behind the scene. I'm sharing with you my lifestyle called digital nomading, and I'm doing that by answering questions from one of the listeners. Her name is Kim. So Kim, this is you driving this episode with your question. You ready? Let's do this. Welcome to the Going to Beyond the Food Show, the only podcast that teaches you how to reshape your mind, not your body, to make your life better, bigger, and bolder, your undieted life. I'm your host, Stephanie Dodier, reformed dieter, nutritionist, and coach. You ready? Let's do this. Hello, sisters. Welcome back. Today is a fun episode. And I have a lot of new stuff, new insight to share with you. And we're gonna get started right away. Big announcement for all of you. I am leaving for Marrakesh, Morocco, at the end of September. For those of you who are part of our email community, you saw an email from me at 6am today, or today being September 1st, announcing that I'm leaving for Morocco, that location, that place in the world that has been on my bucket list for six years. And it's happening now. And I'm very excited about it. And that gave me the opportunity to talk to you about my chosen lifestyle, which is called digital nomading. And I'm going to do that by answering Kim from Nova's Kosha, her question that she sent to me, her and my team have been working back and forth on email. And I got a list of about 12 to 15 questions here that I am going to answer. And I'm going to get started right away because there's a lot of question. And her question from Kim are very well intentioned in order for me to go deeper in why I've chosen to live this lifestyle. So for those who don't know, digital nomading is a way of living your life that allows you to be remote working. So I'm working remotely on my business via my laptop in different locations around the world. That's what's called digital nomadic. I've been doing that for roughly, four to five years. And that's what I'm going to share with you. Now, understanding that digital nomading is not a lifestyle for everyone. What I want you to think about as I'm answering those questions is not for say that you have to become a digital nomad. But instead, I want you to get grounded and rooted in your dream. My dream was to be a digital nomad. What is your dream? What is your desired life? What are you wishing you could do? How do you wish you could live your life? That it is to leave the corporate world, to start your own business, to go back to school, to retire. Like, how do you wish you lived your life? I wished that I was living my life as a digital nomad for years. And now it's my reality. And that reality became accessible to me not because I earned enough money, I worked hard enough, simply because I decided to make it become a reality for me. I decided that I was enough to live my dream life. That's the message I want you to take from this podcast. And this is what we're going to do actually in the Enough Masterclass on September 17th and 18th, if you join us. How do we change the way we think about ourselves in order to step in to the next version of ourselves that is thriving in living her desired life? So let's deep dive into the question that Kim submitted. And we're going to start right off the bat with what was your main reason for trying this lifestyle to work remotely? Could you ever see yourself becoming a full-fledged digital nomad with no home base? So digital nomading became a thing about roughly seven to eight years ago where people were selling everything, selling their house, selling their furniture, putting the strict minimum in the backpack, and then they went and traveled the world with their laptop working digitally. That 
type of digital nomading where you sell everything was never my version of digital nomading. What I loved is being able to explore the world at my own pace while helping and coaching women in undieting their life. So to answer your question, Kim, no, I don't see myself becoming a person who sells everything she owns to only have a backpack and travel the world. I'm going to rephrase the way you named it, a full-fledged digital nomad. I consider myself a, quote, full-fledged digital nomad because of the way that I think and live my life around this lifestyle without having to sell everything that I own. So I am a full-fledged digital nomad in my own version of it. And I still own a house. I still own a condo. I downsize my house. When I sold my nutritional clinic in Toronto, Canada, I sold that building, sold the house that I had, the big car, and I downsized my life that is six years ago, where now I don't have a house, I have a two-bedroom condo, a tiny little Fiat car, which makes my life ready to leave at any time. I just literally put the alarm code in the condo and I leave. I don't have anything to take care of. I can leave as long as I want and I always have a place to come back to. And I don't see myself selling my condo in order to comply with what some people think a digital nomad ought to be. This whole notion of compliance for me is a really sticky point. When I left Aya Culture, I left compliance behind me as well. So I don't want to comply to a version of digital nomading that some people have determined. What is the longest amount of time you spent away on one trip? The longest version has been actually last year in this winter. I left for six months, but I went in three different countries. I went to Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and Mexico. Do you feel more creative in a unique destination? Any haha moment or sparks of inspiration that comes to you while working remotely that maybe wouldn't have happened otherwise? 100%. This is part of the reason why I love traveling because it stimulates a part of my brain that otherwise isn't stimulated. And the more remote the culture is from the one I've been raised into. So when I go to culture, so for example, I'm going to an Arabic Muslim country in Morocco in a month from now, I know this is going to be a massive spark of creativity for me because I observe, I live, literally, I embed myself in their culture, their way of life, and it provokes me to think differently. And it allows me to see and to be in, in a brain that formulates thoughts differently. It allows me to feel different things, it allows me to take different action because I'm being stimulated differently. So 100% I am more creative. And sometimes I don't have to go that far. In the last four months that I've been in Canada, I took smaller trips. And I can think of one where I went to an area of Quebec called Malbé. It's on the side of the St. Lawrence River. And I embedded myself in that fishing village lifestyle. And within two days, I had this massive epiphany on minimalism versus maximalism, which is a whole other (laughs) podcast that I'm going to do. It's on my list of podcasts to do. But I would have never had this realization would I have not been in that different space and different culture than what I was living into. Next question. Being an entrepreneur often means it's hard to quote, get away and really unplug from the business. For me, so Kim as an entrepreneur, 20 plus year in business, I know that retirement isn't coming soon and I'm okay with that. 
That's why the idea of working remotely is so appealing. It gives you a taste of travel and adventure more often and right. You never feel like your work is ruining your vacation because vacation is the vacation. Would you agree? Whew, that's a big question. There's a lot of things I want to unpack here. I think of vacation and work very differently today than I was just six years ago. I don't think of work versus vacation. I just think of my life. I have set up my life. I have chosen a field of work, a way of working that I don't need a vacation from. Everything that I do in my business, because the way I have set it up, I don't need to get away from it. Therefore, I don't think and feel that it's taking away from my trip. When I'm traveling, my work comes with me and gets impacted and influenced by the travel that I'm doing. The other piece about your question is this whole notion of retirement. I used to have a life set up that I would retire by the time I was 60. And recently, about three years ago, I realized that I don't want to retire anymore. So I'm 47 today, and I have no desire today to live a retired life. I am financially no longer planning to retire either. And I know some of you are going to listen to this. I'm going to have a lot of thoughts about me saying this. Just appreciate my different perspective. I'm not telling you that's what you have to do. But I financially, I'm not putting money aside to retire because I don't want to retire. I want to continue to do what I'm doing right now, the way that I'm doing it, for the rest of my life. So that's how I'm thinking about work slash retirement slash vacation. And I have to tell you that it was never intentionally done this way. Six years ago, I didn't decide, oh, I'm going to set up a life that I don't want to retire from. It just unfolded to be experienced. My life, the way I experience my life today is in such a way that I want to continue to experience it this way. I enjoy recording podcasts. I enjoy writing I enjoy coaching so much. I can't imagine not having that relationship with people, with women, not being able to help them. So that's my thoughts on retirement and vacation. Now the company, we're gonna get into the specific of digital nomading here. The company that I hire, that I work with, to enjoy this lifestyle of digital nomading. The company that I use to travel is called Outsite. O-U-T-S-I-T-E. In the show note, you will get a link to an affiliate link to this company that will give you a $50 US discount on your first trip that you book with them. So go to the show notes of this episode to get this affiliate link. I will earn some credit and you will get $50 off your first trip if you're interested in joining the company for your future digital nomading. So Outside is a company that was born just before the pandemic. That's when I joined them. And what they do is they buy property around the world, usually big villas with multiple room. They renovate the space, make five to 10 rooms in the house. And each room has a private bathroom and it's big rooms with a lot of space. And then they rent rooms in those houses throughout the world. And when you get there, everything is organized for you. You've got high speed internet in each room in common space. You've got laundry services, you've got a communal kitchen, you've got transportation arranged. All the things that you normally would have to think about when you travel on your own is all taken care of. The first three years of me being a digital nomad, I did the Airbnb thing, right? I would go on Airbnb, find a location where I wanted to go, communicate with the owner of the space organized high quality internet or tested the internet. Like 
There's a lot of organization, but there was no other ways. That's how everyone did it. And then Outside came in three years ago and decided to offer this quality servicing for people who lived the lifestyle that I was leaving. So I've been, with, I've been a member of Outside now for three years and I'm loving it. I don't travel with Airbnb anymore. I just travel with Outside and I'm loving it because everything is arranged for, with me when I get there. So let's talk about digital nomading in the detail of the living space. So Outside, in my case that I use, is a membership company. So you pay your membership every year. They do a massive security check when you join. You pay your membership and they check to make sure that you're a safe person. So they accept a limited number of people for that matter. So you know that the people you're going to be living with in that space are people that have been vetted and safe, like quote unquote, safe people to the best of their ability that they can check. So you share a communal space with people. You share kitchen, living spaces, outdoor spaces with them. That's one of the things that I love about outside versus Airbnb. When I used to travel with Airbnb, I would rent a space and be alone. When I moved to outside where I was renting a room in a large house, I was automatically in a community of people. So for those of you who think digital nomading is lonely life, that's a whole other topic. It can be if you do the Airbnb thing, but if you choose to, let, to work with a company like Outside, you're not alone. You can be alone if you want to by going into your room, but you also can see people every day by sharing communal space with them. So that was one of the question of Kim here. She says, with outside, it's neat that you can see in advance who will be joining you in a various location. Have I made any special connection with people that I've shared living space with? I want to say yes in every location. However, all the people that go in that space live the same lifestyle as you. So they're in different places at different time all around the world. So it's a different type of connection. We become close very quickly because we live in the same house. So by nature, we become intimate. We share a deep relationship the moment we live together in the house. But beyond that, because we all live different life in different part of the world, I have not stayed in touch with a lot of people. I have them on my texting platform, but it's not like I'm texting them every day. By nature, people who live this lifestyle of digital nomading are people that enjoy being alone with themselves. So it's a kind of, you meet people that are like you. And I am someone who people will tell me, how do you live this life by yourself all the time? Are you not lonely? And the answer is no. I have done so much work on loving myself that I enjoy being with myself today. Like in the past, I can totally connect with people who felt lonely because I felt lonely because I hated myself so much and I despised myself so much that I needed the distraction of other people to take me out of my own body and my own mind. I wanted to be distracted and focus on other people. Today, it's not the case anymore. So I can be by myself for days and not talk face to face like real people conversation and totally be okay with that because I'm my best friend, right? I'm not no longer have a toxic mind and I need to run away from my own thoughts. So digital nomading for that is the, I'm a perfect fit for that in that sense. Let's talk about more details of digital nomading and co-living. Let's talk about kitchen, cooking, and food. Communal kitchen and sharing cooking spaces with other people is another experience. 
And I shared in, a, in the episode in the month of April when I came back home after my six month trip and realizing that I had so much food in my house, right? Because I was used to, when you do co-living and digital nomading, you have like a tiny little shelf in a fridge. You don't hoard food as much. So it completely changed the relationship that I had with food after becoming an intuitive eater, right? I became an intuitive eater. Then I started to heavily digital nomad and co-living and it took my relationship to a whole other space. The kitchen in these, in the company called Outside are high-end kitchen. So you have all the equipment that you have at home is present in those kitchen and Kim asked, is it possible to plan meals and food? If you choose to, it's completely possible to plan your meals in advance. You have access to a freezer, you have access to a fridge, you can do bulk cooking, you have storage container, completely possible. However, living a lifestyle that is based in freedom, what quickly happens is the way you see and, and, and think about your relationship to food will dramatically be impacted by your sense of freedom and also the interaction with other people. Because a lot of time in those co-living space, what we do is we meet up at night in the house, either cook a meal together or go to a restaurant. That's our human interaction for the day is through the dinner meal. So I got to tell you, you can totally plan your meal. You can totally cook in advance, but communal eating is part of the experience. So she talks about, or she's asking more detail on the kitchen work. So for an example, there's one to two free fridges in the house where you're living, depending, or there's commercial fridges in other big houses and you get assigned a shelf. You get assigned a shelf space in the fridge door. You get assigned a shelf in the pantry so your food is separated from other people. What about the cleanup? Very good question. People clean after themselves. I've never been in a house where people were a mess. Never. Again, I think it's a respect we have for each other and it's because the type of vetting and security check they're doing on people before people cook, eat, clean after themselves. And then once or twice a week, there is professional cleaner that comes in and clean all the communal space and your bedroom as well. Okay, let's talk about workspace in digital nomading. So where do you work? In your bedroom. So that is, that is your personal workspace. So if you have to take meetings, for me, when I have to do coaching calls, when I have to do group coaching, it's all happening in my room. The room are very spacious. They all have a desk and a ergonomic chair. And you always have a window as well with natural light in your room. That's where you do your private work. I have never had problem recording podcasts, doing coaching calls, private one-on-one -on -one call from my room. It's right now I'm in my condo. I have an office. This is where I do all my recording and all my coaching call. The only difference when I'm working remotely is that my desk and my bed are in the same place. Beyond that is the exact same thing as at home. And when I go into the work of, I don't know, writing emails, writing social media posts, dance when I go into the communal space so I can see other human, or I go to coffee shop. The same thing that I'm doing when I'm here, I'll go to a coffee shop and do two to three hours of work. So it's the same thing when you're talking about outside or co-living space. So Kim is asking next, what kind of work habit did you find your various housemates, the generation gap, the generational gap often works differently and that's okay too. I have to tell you, I don't spend a lot of time observing how other people work because they don't impact me. Because I have my bedroom with my desk, with my chair. I work on my own schedule and they work on their own schedule. So I don't spend 
And they don't spend a lot of time observing my work habit as well. I know in one place that I live, there's a guy working overnight, I guess, because the time zone that he was in, he was sleeping during the day and he was working overnight. But again, the room are so well done and so isolated that like he didn't disturb me and I didn't disturb him as well. So I don't find that other people work habits impact mine. Now let's talk about the generational gap because that's a question that I very often get asked when I talk about my lifestyle digital nomading because let's face it, I am most often the oldest people in the house. Or even when we go out and we meet people who are from other country, let's say we go for dinner and there's people from other country there, I am most of the time the oldest person in the group. Digital nomading is something very popular with the 35 and below age group. I find that fascinating that there is a huge generational gap between me and them. I find, they find it fascinating. They find it extremely inspiring that this 47 year old woman threw out the corporate world job and build her own business and is now traveling the world. They love it. They have a ton of questions for me. And I watch them and I learn so much about myself. I watch how they live their life and how they think. I'm like, whoa, like I could think like that. I could live like that. They inspire me to change my own life. So again, it's a mindset. This is the way that I think. I don't see the generational gap as being something that I have to work around, something that is a problem or a challenge. For me, it's fascinating and it's like go into my curiosity and I just thrive in it. But yeah, I'm the old geese on the block all the time. So I'll talk to you about one example of that. In Mexico, I was, I happened to be in the house of four other women that were there and they happened to be all lovers of techno music. I, don't, I'm, I know I'm not using the right term, but they would go to a club and dance all night. Call it rave, I think that's what it's called. So they asked me to go with them like they like we're going out friday and it's going to this place with this amazing dj and we're going to dance all night long i'm like great for you i can't wait to hear about it saturday morning i'm going to take a beer with you before you go but i'm staying home and i'm sleeping and tomorrow when you wake up we can talk all about it they offered it to me they invited me in and i had the freedom and i made the choice to say that I wasn't going and it was fine on both sides. And that's another reason why I like digital nomading and co-living is all these experiences that I get to have from being around people that are not exactly like me. Okay, we're coming up to the end of the question. Kim asked, you mentioned that you've been to Mexico, Portugal, Nicaragua, where are you going next? Right now I'm going to Morocco. I don't know how long, that's another thing. I don't know how long I'm going to be there for. I know I've booked for a month. I booked a one-way ticket. I don't know when I'm coming back. Within a couple of weeks of being there, if I enjoy it, if I like it, I may stay there until December. I may also pack up and go somewhere else. The other place around this part of the world that I would like to go would be Madeira, which is an island, a Portuguese island right across Morocco or the Canary Island. They have another, outside has another home there. I may be going there, but who knows? I don't know. Do you travel solo with a friend or colleague? 100% solo. Would you recommend outside? 100% I would recommend outside if you're thinking of being a digital nomad and you want ease. Ease is a key desire in my life. Ease in all aspects of my life. You want ease and you're capable of paying a premium price, then 100% recommend outside. Now I wanna comment on the premium price. One of the common thread in digital nomading, because it's a younger generation who doesn't have a lot of 
wealth and life experience, very often digital nomading is associated with backpack, hostel, living on $10 a day. Again, that is a version of digital nomading. That is not mine. I keep the same lifestyle when I travel than when I'm at home. I don't spend more <laughs> when I'm traveling than I spend home. I have the same level of life. So when I talk about premium prices in with outside, I'm referring to what normally is sold for digital nomading, which is low end hostile type of traveling. So if you've researched digital nomading and that's what you fall onto, know that outside offer a different version of that. And if that is something that you're able and capable of paying, totally go with them. Another element of outside that I haven't mentioned yet that I want to make sure I mention is that they have community managers. In each location, there is someone who takes care of the community. So you always have a local point of contact that you see many times during the week. This person will come in into the house, make sure everything is in order, organize activity once a week. This community manager will organize a group activity that you can choose to go into or not. And if anything goes wrong, they're your first line of contact. I was in a house in Nicaragua where one of my roommate got sick. Probably we think it was food poisoning. The community manager was there recommending doctors, recommending pharmacy, organizing for transport, checking in on him every 12 hours. That is another feature of outside that you, that I love is that you have a local person as your first line of defense. So I am sure I forgot many things or did not answer many questions that you guys may have. So what about if we do this? If I sparked an interest in you in this lifestyle, that it is about the specific of digital nomading, the company that I use, please send an email at info at And then I'll either do a part two to this episode or answer the specific on an email. And stay tuned on all of my social media because I'll be sharing a lot of photos, a lot of videos from my upcoming travel to Morocco. And you will sense the inspiration through the podcast episode that I will be recording, the email that I'll be writing, social media, like it will come through in my work in months and weeks to come. So stay tuned for that. And if you're ready to pursue your dream, to chase that bucket list thing that has been there for years that you haven't allowed yourself to believe it was possible for you, I'm inviting you to join me inside the Enough Masterclass because I'm going to show you how to do the mindset work that will allow you to think living my dream life is possible and I'm making it happen now. I'm gonna be teaching you a very simple mindset tool. We're gonna to talk about decision-making framework that I use to create my desired life. And we're gonna talk about her relationship to goals because let's be honest, Creating your desired life, creating your dream life, require you stretching yourself beyond your current comfort zone and to create goals. And for many of us, we have a unhealthy relationship to goals because of our years within diet culture. And we need to reframe what a goal is and how we use it in our life to create our dreams. So if I can help you with that, come and register for the NF Masterclass happening on September 17th and 18th of this year. With that in mind, I'll see you on the next podcast. I love you. And let's talk in the next episode. If you are loving what you're learning on the podcast, you have to come and check out Undiet Your Life. 
This is where we get to hang out together, where you get the individual help applying the concept thought on the podcast while learning new coaching tool that will make your life even more amazing. It's also where you get to apply the learning to think better, eat better, and feel better and create your undieted life, your better, bigger, and bolder life. Go to stephaniedoze.com forward slash join. I'd love to have you join us inside of Undiet Your Life, and I'll see you on the other side.